Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I am going to be talking about tabletop role-playing games that are powered by the apocalypse. All right, so uh, basically what I'm talking about is there is a number of tabletop role-playing games that fall under the PBTA umbrella, powered by the apocalypse. Now, what this is referring to is the rules engine for the apocalypse world game. Uh, the Apocalypse World game, it's got to be six or seven or eight years uh, old now. Um, it is a distinctly, uh, it's its own distinct brand of tabletop role-playing games. It was brought out originally by a gentleman by the name of Vincent Baker. Um, and so uh, Apocalypse World was a really, really unusual game. And a bit, in my opinion, a bit of a misstart for, for the game itself in that I think what Vincent Baker did was he brought forward this brilliant, brilliant uh, framework for tabletop role-playing games. And the idea is you, you just have a 2d6, and when you roll for successes, um, basically 6 and below is a failure, 7, 8, and 9 is a success at a cost, and then 10, 11, and 12 are a success. And I believe 12 itself is like a critical. Right, if you roll a natural 12. So um, this is like, this is, and essentially that that's just a difficulty check. There's nothing really that innovative there. Uh, it is a little bit elegant in that it, it's really paring down what you're, what you're doing, right? But here's where uh, Apocalypse World really changed the tabletop role-playing game market forever, I think. One of the things that Vincent Baker brought forward was you play to find out what happens. And this was revolutionary. So basically, the concept here is what Vincent Baker was saying in short was stop bringing three notebooks worth of content to your first Dungeons and Dragons game. Uh, and what you need to bring is one single piece of paper, right? You're going to set up some, you're going to send up some, some enemies, you're going to set up some, some issues that, that, you know, people need to, to deal with. You're going to see how, how your players deal with that, and then you're going to write the next session after the first session is done, right? You really came at it from this perspective of, we play the game to find out what's what happens, not to tell a story that is already in someone's mind, right? And this is, this is a fundamental change in tabletop role-playing games. Absolutely brilliant new concept. The other thing that he did was... He, he went from a class perspective of every class has these distinct moves. So what he did was he boiled down each class into you have these moves and there's a bunch of generic moves like attack and defend or generic moves that everybody has, but like heal, right, would be a special move from the cleric, okay? And these moves can be created based on what the game is that you're playing, okay? Now, it's, it's difficult to see here, um, you know, and actually, I'm saying it's difficult to see here. This is one of the issues. So, basically, the Apocaly Apocalypse World was a really challenging tabletop role-playing game in that it challenged people to really innovate the way they were playing, but it also challenged them on some other levels. And so, in some ways, when Vincent Baker brought out Apocalypse World, he's really trying to do a lot all at once. So let's talk about Apocalypse World outside of the rule system. So Apocalypse World, this game that was delivered to the world that has now spawned well over a dozen tabletop role-playing games. Within the short, you know, five to ten years that it's existed, it's had well over a dozen tabletop role-playing games built for, uh, built on the, the Apocalypse World rule set. What he did in the very first game was he built it into this game called the Apocalypse World, which was post-apocalyptic, okay? So one, the first game that this rule set came out for, this beautiful, elegant rule set, was really, in my opinion, really, really inaccessible to players. It was mature content, it was science fiction, which generally, if you make a tabletop role-playing game, and you make it a science fiction game, you can cut the, the audience in half, right? But he went further and he said, this is post-apocalyptic. So scarcity, savage, savage violence, mature content. Each time, each word, each phrase I'm saying, 
you're cutting the people who are going to approach this game, right? So if you bring out a tabletop role-playing game and you say it's science fiction, take half your readers and just throw them away. If you say it's post-apocalyptic, take 25% of those readers and just throw them away because people aren't going to be interested. Then you say it's mature content, take half your, you know, take another quarter to half your readers and throw them away, right? So it was really interesting in that he built, he built this incredibly beautiful rule system, but it was hidden in this incredibly inaccessible game, right? So what happened next? What happened next was these two guys brought forward a game called Dungeon World. And Dungeon World was was Dungeons & Dragons run with the Apocalypse World rule set, okay? This is one of the first PBTA, Powered by the Apocalypse, games. The term Powered by the Apocalypse didn't even exist then. PBTA is a term that is now applied to these games, uh, which is which is great. I think it's you know it's good to have a nice succinct tag, right? So um, Dungeon World was brilliant. It was brought forward by Sage Latora and Adam Cobell. So Latora and Cobell, they took this beautiful, beautiful rule system and they put it into a very accessible, really you know bog standard fantasy world, right? And um, which you know, was good. It needed, you know, we needed to take those rule sets and put it into something that people could see and people could use and people could run. They could run it for different ages. They could run it for people that liked, you know, that for the vast majority of tabletop role players, all those kind of things. So Dungeon World was massively important in bringing forward the PBTA rules, right? The Powered by the Apocalypse rules. Um, very, very interesting. Uh, then at that point, uh, the next, you know, one of the next things that happened was there's a guy by the name of John Harper. John Harper is a brilliant, brilliant tabletop role-playing game designer, um, and he wrote a game called Ghost Lines. Ghost Lines is only six pages long, and Ghost Lines was the seed. It was the kernel that created a tabletop role-playing game that exists right now, that is being written right now, called Blades in the Dark. And Blades in the Dark is going to be a 300-page beast of a tabletop role-playing game that I think might really hit the, the market pretty big, you know. Um, it's, it's, it's essentially like John Harper's opus, uh, magnum opus, um, and it's not going to be powered by the apocalypse. I don't think it's going to be a PBTA game, but the, the concepts that are in it are very reminiscent of Apocalypse World, of Vincent Baker's work, and of Latora and Cobell. So Harper is very, very aware of what Baker and Latora and Cobell accomplished. And, um, and you know, now, in my opinion, you're looking at the, the absolute masters of tabletop role-playing games on this side of the, on this edge of the tabletop role-playing game world. Now, they're just a little bit left uh, or, or a little bit right. They're on this far extremes. They're so close to being a, a storytelling a storytelling game. They're they're so innovative that they're they just barely qualify for being tabletop role playing games, right? Which is okay. To me, where you draw the line is as soon as you say, "Hey, this game doesn't have a game master," you're outside the world of tabletop role playing games. And so, uh, but but these guys are really really brilliant, and uh, PBTA is really really fascinating. Now, I do. I am really curious about PBTA. These powered by by, by the apocalypse games, they are great, and there and there are significant problems as well. One of the things that's really great about these games is um, just how innovative they are, and and how freeing they allow storytelling to be. So, one of the things they really do uh, that I think is important is they are getting tabletop role playing games to the point where. Where, where I think the next evolution of tabletop role-playing games is freeing tabletop role-playing games from blow-by-blow -blow com combat. I attack you with my sword. I roll. You defend. You roll. Right? Like, that. it, it is slow. It is so slow. Right? And I think now, especially with these large, large online audiences starting to grow for these storytelling, we want to be able to tell stories quickly. And there are a lot of tools within PBTA, within these Powered by the Apocalypse games. So, um, so they're, they're incredibly valuable from that perspective. One thing that I, I really am a little concerned about with PBTA is they really do come off, almost all the PBTA games, come off as a little bit too cool for school. And what I mean by that is 
the entire community is populated. The vast majority of that, of that community is populated with people who are like, I've come in advanced away from Dungeons and Dragons. I've gone beyond that game, right? And I get, you know, it's like, it's like an art house tabletop role playing game. Now the problem with this is, PBTA has the most beautiful, elegant rules. They're they're works of art, okay? But they're being they're 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 in this little corner. And one of the things that concerns me about PBTA is, I just went to an incredibly well stocked, um, t- uh, a well stocked game shop. He had literally no less than fifty to hundred tabletop role playing games on the shelf, okay? There were two PBTA games on that shelf. Um, uh, actually, there were two games that I, uh, well, one, Dungeon World was on that shelf. That's a big deal. That, you know, that's right there. You have, you could buy that thing, you could grab it right off the shelf and buy Dungeon World. That's a big deal. And that says a lot for the work that Latora and Cobell did. They took an elegant uh, game and they made it accessible enough to where you could actually buy it in a stocked gaming shop. That's not an easy task nowadays. It really isn't, right? And then the other issue is, um, but like there, I think there was another game on there called Umlaut, you know, which was like the, uh, the, it's like a, a rock and roll band, metal band, tabletop role playing game. But again, it doesn't use a, a game master. So it, I'm not even sure if it really qualifies as a tabletop role playing game or if it really even exists within the PBTA world, but I didn't see any other PBTA games. There are a ton of, of games out there. Monster of the Week, um, Monster Hearts, uh, Worlds in Peril. Um, there are just a ton of these really good PBTA games, but they're so niche that people almost never see them. They don't really show up in print very often. And that, that's something I would like really like to see the PBATA community move past is, yes, you have an elegant rule set. I, I'm hoping that the PBTA will kind of start to try to bring more mainstream tabletop role-playing games into their community, right? Um, and that, that is, uh, and, and, and it's one of my goals too, is, is, you know, merge the really artful, um, aspects of the best tabletop role playing game rules designs with accessibility. Cause sometimes right now they're, they're a little detached. So, uh, thanks for, you know, hearing me talk through, uh, PBTA games. They've been on my mind a lot lately. Um, I love them, but I, I do struggle with bringing them to my groups because they're not uh, they're not super intuitive, right? They're incredibly powerful, but not not intuitive. But but they are a huge innovation in tabletop role playing games, and I think they speak for where tabletop role playing games are heading. I also personally believe that Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition owes a great debt to Vincent Baker, um, Sage Latora, and Adam Cobell. In that, I think the the pillars of the new Dungeons and Dragons 5e exploration, interaction, and combat that is a fancy way of saying let's play to find out what's happening, and and that's really interesting. I, I really feel that a lot of concepts from Apocalypse World, from Dungeon World, actually made it into Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition. Thank you. Take care, everybody.